selection of cars. We're on day six of the European tour. It's nearly finished. We are 150 miles from the Nürburgring. We're heading in the convoy together to the Nürburgring. We're gonna rent out some cars at the Nürburgring. So what I thought I would do is take you for a ride in my car whilst we're in the convoy down to the Nürburgring. So come and join us in the Alpha 4C. I don't think it looks too out of place in this beautiful company. So we've got the carbon fiber tub in case you haven't seen the 4C before. The whole thing is carbon fiber. It's really, really light. This one has all the options on it. It's got the larger wheels. It's got the leather interior with the red stitching. And I've got the uh, sports exhaust on this and I've got the Quicksilver exhaust. And I've also got a racing chip taking up to 280 brake horsepower. So it's keeping up with this convoy, but let's jump inside and see what it's like. YouTube channel with a yellow Alpha 4C with uh, Danny Menzies and I really surprised her when she got into this car she thought it was a lot of fun so I'm not going to do a full review I'm just going to talk about what it's like to travel 1700 miles in a 4C across Europe some of the things I like some of the things I don't like I think the most surprising thing on this trip is how comfortable this car has been uh, the seats don't hug you like a sports seat do but they're not uncomfortable at all. I've got no back aches. I haven't once felt uncomfortable. So that was one of the biggest surprises for me. The second surprise is that this car keeps up with the rest of the convoy. So at the moment I'm traveling behind um, a 458 Speciale and the Performante is up front. And this car has standard 240 brake horse. I've got 280 with the chip and they do pull away but it's mostly because they're going through the corners a lot faster and that's because they're braking much later than I am and now I'm, when I get back to London I'm gonna look into a front brake upgrade because I think that with stronger braking power I would be able to carry a lot more speed into the corners um, when you push on the brakes they're good but they're not they're not immediate. You don't get that immediate braking that you get in something like the Performante. And after driving the Performante, you realize you can carry a lot more speed into a corner because you know that you can brake much later. But that's not saying the brakes aren't good. The power delivery is blisteringly quick. The turbo cuts in immediately. There's hardly any lag. The only time you get any lag is when you're in automatic mode and you're going into a corner and it doesn't know which gear to be in when it's pulling out the corner. So I'm gonna put it into manual mode now and in manual mode, you're just changing the gears with the paddles, which I really find is the best way to drive through lots of twisty bends. Obviously, if you're on the motorway, you just keep it in automatic mode. Um, this car has uh, Bluetooth, so I've been able to listen to my Spotify, which is really nice. The aircon is really good. 
Um, it's 30, 32 degrees out today, and not once have I felt hot. Um, I've got the aircon. I've had the aircon on a week actually, so the aircon's really good, which is something I didn't expect from an Alfa Romeo. To be fair, although this is my first Alfa Romeo, um, the looks I love. Um, I really like it in black, this car, and it gets lots of admiring glances and people coming up to me. People haven't seen this car before or haven't seen it in black, but uh, it's getting good uh, good glances from people, thumbs up from everyone. Um, the one thing that really strikes me about this car, and I think I've talked about it in the past, is how much fun it is. Now, when I say fun, I'm not saying a Performante or Speciale are less fun, more fun. But this car entertains you from the minute you jump into it. You sit deep down in the cockpit, you've got surrounded by carbon fiber. And because the steering is not power assisted, you have to really hold on to it. And it's very involving. And the turbo cuts in, and I'm doing now second gear, 35. You can see how fast that is. to six and a half thousand revs and I'm keeping up with the Performante and the Speciale. Really nice, really nice. It's just a lot of fun. I think at very low down speeds, which is where most of us will be driving these cars. Because let's face it, how often are going to come across Europe or do a cross-country trip in a car? Maybe twice a year if you're lucky. So you, what you want is a car that's going to entertain you on your you know school runs or uh, going to work or just popping out in the evening to see friends and this car does that in bucket loads it entertains puts a smile on my face the whole time i'm driving going around the twisty bends um, is a little bit of a challenge because of the steering especially the really tight hairpins it's quite difficult with the non-power assisted steering to go through the, through the really tight hairpins. On the Speciale, you know, you just flick the steering wheel, it's really light, really lovely. On this, it's quite hard work. But then again, how often are you going to go around mountain passes and really, really tight hairpins? Um, what else do I like about it? So the standard car has a little bit of a drone when you're traveling around 70 miles an hour. So I changed this to a Quicksilver exhaust, which has bigger tips at the back, and I think it sounds a lot better, and it, you don't have that drone at all. So when you're traveling on the motorway, it's perfect, this car. And obviously on the Autobahn, which we've done a few times today, I've been traveling at 130 miles an hour on the Autobahn, and the car is really, really solid, um, which surprised me as well because uh, you would expect a small little car like this only to be good at low down speeds, but it's not. It takes off really quickly on the motorway and it sits at 100, 120 miles an hour, no problem at all, really stable. Yeah, it's really surprised me, this car. I really, really love it. I've fallen in love with it even more on this trip because I wasn't sure whether to take the Porsche box, the Spider, with the manual gearbox or whether to take this and in the end, I thought with doing so much mileage, it would be better to have something with a dual clutch gearbox. And I'm not sure the Porsche Boxster Spider would have kept up uh, with all these cars because it would have had a manual gearbox. And none of the cars on this trip have a manual gearbox. And the Alfa Romeo really is phenomenally fast with the dual clutch gearbox. I reckon this car is doing naught to 60 miles an hour in under four seconds. Um, I've never really felt a big distance between the other cars apart from when we went to Stelvio Pass early in the morning and the Performante and Speciale took off around the corners and I, I just couldn't keep up uh, around the corners as I said because of the braking uh, and the confidence that those cars give you into the corners whereas this doesn't so I think that's enough from me in the 4C I think what we're going to do next is we're gonna jump into the F12 um, on the Autobahn, and we're gonna see what speed that huge V12 can get up to on the Autobahn, which is what that car's designed for, nice GT cruising. So we'll catch up with you in the F12.
come to the end of our European trip. We're now at the Nürburgring. We are thinking about taking out the 4C and the Performante. And we've also rented a lovely Swift. Beautiful mint green. What do you think of that? So, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. I'm definitely going to do another one of these trips very, very soon. But tune in for the next video, which maybe will take around these cars around the Nürburgring. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. See you soon.